If you're working with longer documents, multi-page documents, sooner or later you're going to encounter section breaks. And section breaks are one of the more strange features that Microsoft Word has. So in this video I'm going to show you how and why you want to use section breaks to work with long documents. And quite simply I'll just kind of uh, give you a quick rundown of why you want to do that. If you ever want to change the orientation on one page and not the rest of a several page document you've got to use section breaks. If you want to change the page numbering style on a section of the document you have to use section breaks. If you want to use different headers or footers in different sections of the document you're going to have to use section breaks. So let's go ahead and go through an example here. So I have a multi-page document here and we're going to use that as our example. Now the first thing I would like to have happen here is notice that this page here that has this illustration on it I would like this particular page to be landscaped and I'd like that illustration to be a little larger. Now the problem that I run into is well all the pages around it are not landscape. So my first inclination is just to go ahead and go into layout and change the orientation to landscape. Well it did indeed change that page to landscape but notice that it also changed every other page as well. So if I want to change this page to landscape and not the other pages, what I'm essentially going to have to do is build a wall that keeps the formatting from one page bleeding over onto other pages. So if I just want this one page to be landscape and the rest of the document to be portrait, I'm going to have to create a wall between this page, change the landscape uh, orientation, then I'm going to have to create another wall and of course these walls are called section breaks. But let me give you an illustration. Let's just go ahead and see how simple this is. So normally what we have here is we have a page break. Uh, I'll show you here by turning on the paragraph symbols, the hide show paragraph mark, and now I have a normal page break. Now with a normal page break there isn't a wall between the formatting and the formatting will just bleed over. So I'm going to delete that page break. Now that didn't move the picture up onto that other page because there isn't any room for it, but it, I'm going to replace that page break with a section break. I find the section breaks in the layout tab on the ribbon. So I go to the layout tab and then I go ahead and choose breaks. And I'll click the drop down list here. Now I have different kinds of breaks. I have uh, page breaks uh, which is what we had already which is not what we want. Uh, a column break which is very helpful if you're working with uh, newspaper columns. But in this case we're working with section breaks and so I would like to create a next page section break. So as soon as I do that again because I had the hide show paragraph marks on I can see that this created a next page section break. So there is a wall now between the formatting between these two pages if I were indeed going to change it and I am. So I'm going to go back to the page that I want to be landscaped. I'm going to go into the layout tab again. I'm going to change the orientation to landscape. There we have it. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of that picture because that's what I was trying to do in the first place here. But look and see what happened again. Well, all the other pages after that are now in landscape. So yes, I built a wall between this page and this page, but I need to also have a wall, a section break, between the picture page and the rest of the text. So as I did before, I'm going to go ahead and delete the page break, and I'm going to replace it with a section break. So I go back to layout, I choose breaks, and I want a next page section break. All right, so now I have a next page section break here. Now you might notice down on my status bar, it actually tells me that I'm working with section three. Let me show you how I turn this on. If you right click on your status bar and it isn't on, you can just turn it on. And that's very helpful when you are working with large documents and you want to see indeed do I have a section break here. All right, so I have a section break here. So now I can go back to the layout tab and I can change the orientation on this page to portrait. And so now I have multiple sections in this document. I actually have three sections in this document. So the first two pages are section one. It verifies that on the status bar. The Landscape page is section two, and the next page that is back to portrait orientation is section three. Well, the other thing that I usually will do with section breaks is use them to control headers and footers. So we'll assume in this case that this is a, a very large document and I have many pages for each section. We can even call them chapter headings for this matter. So I would like a header on this section that says overview 
or these couple of pages. And when I get down to this page, I would like the header to say implications. Well, let's go ahead and see how that works here. So I'm going to go to the page that I first want a header. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to insert just to show you the long way to do it. I could also just double click here at the top uh, and display the header area. But uh, again, just to show you the long way to do it, um, proper way, I suppose, is to go into insert and choose header. All right, now it says, what kind of header do I want? Well, I want a blank header for now. So I'll go ahead and click on there for blank header. It says type right here. And again, I want this header to say overview. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the header and footer. Again, I could double click outside of the header into the text and that would do the same thing. Well, that's exactly what I want. I have overview there. Well, notice I also have overview at the very top on the title page. I have overview on the landscape page, which is fine. That's part of the overview. But now I get down into the implications page and notice again, even though I have a section break here, it copied the formatting, in this case, the header, from the other page. So I might be tempted in this case to just double click there and go ahead and change this to implications. And surely Word is smart enough to know that's what I want, is I want this section to be implications and the rest to be overview. Well, it isn't that smart. Now I have implications everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to overview. But because I already have section breaks here, I can very easily change the header in section three without having it affect the header in section two. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the header area here. I'm in section three where I want it to read implications. But before I type implications, because if I did, it would also mess up the other header, I need to turn off, and I'm in the header and footer uh, tab up here on the ribbon. Notice there's this little option that's turned on that, that, that is labeled link to previous. If that is on, even though I have a wall built between these, a section break between these pages, these sections, it will still bleed over as far as headers and footers and page numbers are concerned. So I'm going to turn off the link to previous. Now that it's no longer bleeding over, I can change this to implications. Click outside of it so I'm no longer in my footer area, header area. And now I have overview, overview, and implications. Exactly what I wanted. So again, the key to changing the page formatting from one page to another is to build a wall, which you know I just like to call that in colloquial terms here, but it is a section break. Now, I'm still not quite happy here because I really do not want the header of overview on my title page. I'm also going to turn off my uh, hide show paragraph marks here just to, uh, to make it a little bit cleaner here. Well, of course, I, I, I know right now I can't go in here and just erase it because if I erased it there, it would also erase it on the other two pages that have overview. Well, knowing what you already know now about section breaks, you could go in and put in a section break between the title page and the second page and then change, you know, turn off the link to previous and change the header and that would work as well too. But there's also another easier way to do that when you're dealing with the first page. Now, if I go ahead and go back into the layout tab again here, whoops, layout tab, silly. Okay, layout tab and I go into the page setup dialog box I can go into layout again and notice there's an option here that says different first page. Well, that essentially creates a kind of a fake section break between the, in this case, the first page of the document, which is the title page and the rest. So if I just turn that on and click OK, it turns off the header. I could now put any header there that I wanted to, but often when you're working with reports, uh, whether they be you know uh, academic reports or even business reports, a lot of times you don't put any kind of a header on the title page. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go ahead and add some page numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into the header for section number one. And I'm going to tab over here. Okay, each time I hit tab, the, the first time I hit tab, it went to the center location. The second time I hit tab, it went to the right margin here. I'm going to insert a page number right here. So I'll go ahead and go back into insert and I will choose page number and I can put it at the top of the page. I can put it at the bottom of the page, but because my insertion point is actually, actually blinking inside the header area, I'm actually going to choose uh, current position and I'm going to go ahead and just select here. Oh, let's just select the, just the plain old page here. Okay, there we go. 
well, I'm going to go ahead and go out of it here. I have page two there. I have page three here. Everything's looking fine. Whoops. Because we turned off the link to previous, we do not have a page number here as well. But that's easy to fix. I'll go ahead and fix that as well. Tab over. And I'll go ahead and insert the page number here too. All right. And we'll just go ahead and put page number at the current position. OK. And now we have page four and page five. All right. Everything's looking good except for one minor additional thing. Notice that the first page of my document actually has page two because the title page is page one. And again, if I go down to my status bar here, it tells me that I'm in section one uh, and I'm on page two of five. Well, I really don't want this first page to be counted as page one. I want this one to be page one. And there's a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to do this by changing the page number formatting. So I'm going to move into the header area here. And I'm going to kind of select that page number. And then if I go into the page number, and again, I can find it on the header and footer tab since I'm in the header and footer, it knows that's what I'm dealing with here. I go ahead and go into page number and I choose format page numbers. Now I can choose different styles of page numbers here if I wanted to. I could choose letters. I could choose uh, Roman numerals. I'm OK with this style. I don't want to change that. Uh, notice that we also have this continue from previous section. That's what's on now. In other words, if I were to put a different section break in here, uh, for instance, page four and page five, do say page four and five. They didn't start over with the implications page one, implications page two. Well, in order to have this document show page two as page one, I'm going to tell it to start counting at page zero. A very simple, easy way to do this here. At that point, I click OK. That is page zero. When I move down now, I have page one. And of course, I have page two and page three and page four. OK, very, very easy to change this as long as we use section breaks. So section breaks allow us to build the wall between one page and another so that the formatting of one page doesn't affect the other. And just to review very, very quickly here, if you do use headers and footers and you want one header to be different even after you've created your section break, you have to turn off the link to previous. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You can find additional videos on my YouTube channel or you can go to my website, luthermaddy.com, where you'll also find additional resources and step-by-step -step instructions for many of the videos that I have created. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.